Hello, everyone. Welcome you back to study MA4822, which is about the measurement and the sensing system. If you look at the title of this course, you see this keyword system. Once you see the keyword system, automatically you uh, will ask three questions. Question number one, what are the input to the system? Question number two, what are the output from the system? Question number three, what should be the uh, inner process which will transform the input to become the output? Then for this uh, particular course, uh, you may want to know what are the origin of the input to uh, measurement and the sensing system. What should be the destination from the output of a measurement and the sensing system? The answer to the first question should be the physical world because the signal comes from the physical world. The answer to the second question should be the conceptual world because uh, through the use of uh, sensory data, we want to obtain information or knowledge about the physical world. And uh, this information and the knowledge about the, the physical world uh, basically refer to the concept, principle, relationship, etc. All right. So today we are going to study the nature or basic detail about the physical world because the physical world is the origin of all the signal that the uh, sensor and the measurement system uh, should be able uh, to, uh, to take uh, as an input, all right? Because uh, the input to measurement and the sensing system come from the physical world. So therefore it is important for us to know the nature of the physical world. All right, so before we enter the study about the basic detail of the physical world, uh, let's have an uh, overview or review about the answer to these uh, four common questions that uh, you may have uh, in mind. Question number one, uh, why do study this course? Question number two, how do study this course? Question number three, what are you going to learn from this course? And the question number four, how to apply, uh, learn the knowledge from this uh, course, All right? So let's start with uh, the answer to the first question, which is about uh, uh, why to study uh, this course, all right? So you see uh, the two, major uh, mental activity of a human being are number one is to understand the world. Number two is to change the world. In order to understand the world, we need to uh, capture signal, analyze the sensory data, then in order to understand uh, the inner working principle, uh, about the physical world, etc. All right, and uh, for the second mental activity, which is about the uh, how to change uh, the world, to change the world basically means to improve the world. All right, and uh, the best way for us to improve the physical world is to invent intelligent product, intelligent machine, intelligent system. All right. Then in order to implement intelligent system, intelligent product, okay, or intelligent machine, we need to make use of uh, feedback control loop and the inside the feedback control loop sensor is one of uh, the three uh, basic building block inside the feedback control loop, right? So therefore, it is very important uh, for us to study the design principle behind the measurement and the sensing system, all right? So uh, this should be the answer to this question, all right? Then how to study this course, all right? 
So I recommend you uh, to put yourself into the mindset of a designer. Then in this way, with the keyword of a designer in mind, automatically you will ask yourself uh, these four questions. Who are the user? What are the need of the user? What are your internet of a sensor which could meet the need of your user? And uh, what should be the solution uh, behind the design of your product, such as the uh, internet of a sensor or sensor themselves, all right? Then the answer to question number one should be obvious, okay? The user include human being who may want to understand the world. Therefore, we need to use a sensor to measure okay, all the uh, sensory data, et cetera. Second type of user should be intelligent machine, intelligent system, or intelligent product in which uh, they are presence of a closed loop feedback control system. Because for closed loop feedback control system, uh, sensor is one of the three basic building block, all right? Then second question, what are the need from the user? Basically the need for, from this user are the same to have a sensory data, to obtain sensory data, right? Then what should be your, your, your product, okay? Or your system, okay? That you are going to offer in order to meet the need of this user. So then the answer to this question depends on the specific need from this user. For example, if you are going to, uh, design internet of a sensor for humanoid robot. Then inside the robot, uh, you need to offer like a mini version of uh, internet of a sensor, all right? And uh, if the user is a city, then you need to offer, like, okay, uh, internet of a sensor which could cover like, uh, the majority part of a city, all right? So answer to question number three depends on the uh, specific need from uh, future user. Then answer to question number four uh, should be the study of this course. Only after the study of this course, you will know the answer to question number four. All right. Then what are you going to study from uh, this course? So this course basically will let you to study the basics about the physical world and the basics about the sensing and the measurement, the basics about the conceptual world. Then, uh, we are going to uh, focus on the study about the design principle uh, or working principle behind uh, four categories of a sensor. One uh, refer to the sensor in electric domain, uh, second one refer to the sensor in mechanical domain, and the third one refer to the sensor in the domain of uh, ego system. Okay. And the last one referred to the sensor needed by intelligent robot, intelligent uh, machine, which aim at the achieving uh, human-like intelligence. Because for human being, okay, uh, visual intelligence is the most important part. Uh, the second one should be the, the mental capability uh, with the use of uh, uh, speech and the voice. All right, in order to undertake the conversational dialogue. All right, so these are the two uh, major components inside uh, human intelligence. If machine want to achieve a similar uh, level of uh, uh, human intelligence, uh, then future machine must have uh, uh, capability uh, to capture visual signal, capture uh, acoustic signal, uh, right? So this should be the content for you to study from uh, this course. Then how to apply, learn the knowledge from this course. So basically uh, you should be able to apply uh, the learn the knowledge from this course to design sensor, right? So you may have a sensor uh, just uh, which just have a, a front end uh, sensing element, or you may have a sensor which will include both front end uh, sensing element plus a back end sensing element, uh, right? And uh, most importantly, uh, uh, for majority of a sensor, uh, you need to do calibration. Then in this way, the output from the sensor will be exactly equal to the input, okay, to the sensor. So this is the way for you to apply learned knowledge in order to 
Gaiula, you design sensor as a product, and uh, subsequently you can network, okay, or put uh, all the sensor together and the interconnect uh, sensor together in order to form a network of a sensor, right? Now we enter the study of uh, this lecture, which is about the basic detail of uh, physical world, okay? So we will cover uh, the idea okay of the, the detail about the physical system physical entity and uh, in particular so we are going to uh, study the nature of the knowledge okay because uh, you may keep this uh, question in mind uh, what is a signal what is the sensory data what is the knowledge all right so then uh, lastly we will highlight to you that uh, the basic uh, uh, or generic uh, uh, principle uh, uh, for you to follow in order to design a uh, measurement and the sensing system uh, as a product, All right? So let's uh, begin with uh, the, the detail about the physical system in the universe or in the world, All right? So uh, first question, okay, this is a very, very big question. So it's very interesting for you to start from uh, this viewpoint uh, of the uh, universe, because from the universe, you will understand, uh, okay, uh, the nature of uh, physical world, and uh, in particular, the physical world on Earth, because we are living on Earth, all right? Then inside the physical world, we have a system. Inside the system, we have an entity. Inside the entity, we have a material, etc. All right? So let's start from uh, uh, the viewpoint of the universe, all right?
right? So that video help you uh, to think big about the universe. Then you see, oh, it's a huge system. So you see the keyword solar system, galaxy, super cluster of a planet, etc. Right? Then you, you may feel that uh, wow, it's so complicated for us to understand the universe. Actually, it's not so complicated. Okay, so you look at this slide. Now, what is the universe? So from engineering point of view, universe consists of object flow and knowledge flow. That's it, so simple, all right? So on top, we have a system. The inside the system, we have an entity. Inside the entity, we have a material. Inside the material, we have a molecule, atom, particle, then at the lowest level, energy. So you see, you can think big, you can also think small, all right? All the way down to the energy, all right? So, so this just consists of a single, flow of an object, okay? So object at the different size, that's it, all right? But in parallel, it's very important for us to think about the knowledge flow because uh, a system is not static system, it's a dynamic system, okay? So they have uh, interaction, action, reaction, etc. among themselves, okay? So they have uh, dynamics and the inside the dynamics, they must be interaction because interaction will produce a dynamics, okay? Then why there is an interaction? There must uh, be causality, cause, effect, etc. action, reaction, all right? Then why there is a causality? It's because uh, every entity has a property constraint that due to the presence of a constraint, then there's a causality, all right? So all these property constraints could be observed, okay? uh in terms of uh, signal right and the signal basically is a manifestation of uh, energy for example you have a current flow current flow basically represent uh, electric energy then you have a velocity you have a mass then you see the kinetic energy etc all right so in the left hand side we have an object flow in the right hand side we have a knowledge flow now you understand okay how to measure the value of a signal? The answer is what? Sensor. So we must have a sensor in order to understand the universe, understand the world, all right? Okay, so this slide will help you to understand the importance of this course, all right? Then uh, this video will show you again, uh, okay, about the size of the universe, how big is the universe? <laughs>
All right, so this video show you uh, <laughs> the idea uh, about the, the size of uh, the universe. Uh, it's a huge, huge channel, okay? So, okay, the previous two video help you to sing uh, big, okay? Then you must also sing smaller, okay? Uh, how small could uh, be the size of a uh, particle, all right? So then you see uh, the scale of uh, atom, you see, is a 10 raised to the power, negative 10. Uh, scale, so the size of a nuclear is a 10 raised to the power, negative 14. And uh, for the particle quark, okay? So you, you know the, the how small it is, uh, 10 raised to the power, negative 80, all right? Or 18, okay? So it's very, very, very small, okay? So you, you, this just help you to think big about the universe, to think small about the universe, all right? So, so this uh, slide summarizes the dimension, uh, okay? And the scale. Then you may ask this question, uh, are we going to uh, design the sensor which could be applicable uh, to, uh, to sense the signal coming from the, the, the huge uh, uh, planet? or uh, are we able to design a sensor to measure the signal emitted by quark or proton, all right? So what, what should be the scale of uh, space for us to focus on, all right? So you may have this question in mind, uh, are we going to design the sensor uh, for tiny space or for huge space or for the normal space in which we are living in, all right? So this just uh, help you to think about the the, 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 this, this constraint or condition, okay, for us to uh, focus on the design of the measurement and the sensing system, all right? And uh, this slide, again, show you uh, the dimension uh, of the universe, and uh, it will help you uh, to think big. You see the size of a galaxy is a 10 raised to the power uh, 21, okay? And uh, how small is uh, atomic nuclear 10 raised to the power negative 14, right? So let more or less you understand that, okay? When we design the sensor, uh, our scale is uh, one meter, okay? At, at least scale is, uh, okay? Uh, so we are, we are not going to design the sensor at the atomic level, or we are not going to design the sensor for the measurement of the entire galaxy, all right? So <laughs> we are on Earth, all right? So more or less we focus on, on, on the design of a sensor at the least scale, all right? And uh, another thing is important for you to understand that besides the size, okay, universe is a big universe, is also very small, all right? Then how is the universe organized? So actually it's quite interesting for us to know the answer. So university, uh, the universe is organized in three levels, uh, system level, entity level, and the material level, right? Then our focus is on the system level and the entity level, okay? Uh, maybe cover a little bit the material level, okay? but we will not go below material level. We are not going to design the sensor to measure the property or the signal emitted by molecule, atom, nuclear, proton, quark, et cetera, all right? So these three levels should be our focus, okay? For the design of a measurement and the sensing system, all right? And then this picture basically show you a, a robotic system, all right? So this is a normal skill, uh, which are, uh, familiar to us, right? Then, uh, since the universe uh, is being organized at the least three level, then what should be the definition uh, for physical system in the universe or in the world on Earth, all right? So, uh, then in this case, we will use uh, uh, the, the technical term, uh, which is about the physical entity, because the system consists of uh, uh, entity which could act and uh, interact together for the achievement of a common goal, right? So therefore, uh, inside the system, there must be the presence of a physical entity, right? Which could act and interact together. Then all the physical entity, okay, which act and interact together for the purpose of achieving common goal, 
then we call them uh, as a system. For example, here we have a robotic system, and uh, here you have a robotic arm plus the controller and uh, plus the, the base uh, to support the robotic arm. And eventually uh, we may attach the tool uh, at, the, at, the, at the end of the robotic arm. So all these things or all this entity will form uh, the robotic system, all right? And uh, then uh, once we have a system, the system has an input, the system has an output, then how will be the output from a system looks like in general, right? So this slide basically show you uh, the general uh, behavior, the general pattern of the output from uh, any system, all right? So normally the output from a system include steady state response, transient response, all right? Okay, so then based on the type of the output, then we can classify the system into three types, okay? Uh, one is unstable system, another is imaginary stable system, and, uh, and that's the third one should be stable system, okay? Then how to judge, okay, whether a system fall into the category of uh, unstable, category of uh, imaginary stable, or category of uh, being stable? then we need to have uh, these uh, three criteria. One is uh, about the stability, second one is about response time, and the third one is about the response uh, accuracy, uh, okay? So these are the three indicators which uh, help us to measure, uh, okay? Or characterize the output from the system, all right? Then from the design point of view, we could uh, uh, design closed loop control system, uh, feedback control uh, system, etc. Then, based on the type of output, we may have this idea about the, what should be the uh, best system. Okay, and uh, the answer should be static system because uh, once you have a transient response, a transient response will produce error. All right. So uh, another way to understand this answer is to use these uh, three criteria. Uh, uh, could we have a system which is 100% stable, uh, zero response time, and 100% accuracy? The answer is yes. Then what should be this type of system? Answer is the static system. So this is the best system, 100% accuracy, zero response time, and 100% uh, uh, response accuracy. So these, uh, these systems are called as a static system. But however, in practice, it's difficult to achieve uh, such a result, all right? Then in this case, uh, we must make the actual system to behave as close as possible uh, to a static system, right? Then the, the easiest way for us to achieve this goal is to design system uh, with a closed loop uh, feedback control inside. So this is why uh, you, you see this uh, statement, uh, idea system in the world is, uh, uh, should be the uh, closed loop control system. All right, okay, so this slide basically show you uh, background, a lot of uh, very, very important background knowledge about the system, all right? Then here is an example uh, about the human-made uh, system. And uh, this is a typical example showing you uh, about the mental activity of a human being uh, with the goal of uh, changing the world. So you see there are two major mental activity of a human being. One refer to the understanding of the world. The second one refer to the uh, change of the world. Okay, then how to change the world? Okay, we try to invent, okay? Intelligent machine, intelligent product, intelligent system, okay? In order to improve the world, right? And the design of a smart robot is one example. Okay.
So this robot was uh, developed by us, uh, by our research team. So it was a uh, part of the team member. Then this slide basically show you a typical example of an open loop system, right? And uh, normally we will use a open loop system to serve as a, a module like inside a larger uh, closed loop control system, all right? So, and uh, here is a, another example of a, a the open loop aspect of a closed loop control system. If let's say we do not close the loop, then okay, so the system will, will behave uh, like this. Okay, it looks like this. All right, but uh, in practice, uh, okay, so we will close the loop in order to undertake the uh, feedback control. And uh, here you see the presence of a sensor. All right, okay. So that's about the physical system. Now you see from the viewpoint of a universe, the universe consists of a many, many physical world, all right? Because the uh, universe is a huge, okay? And the universe also is a very, very small, tiny, because uh, once you go down to the uh, level of a particle or quark, okay? So universe is also very, very small, all right? So then for us, we focus our study at the normal scale. So, and uh, try to consider that the universe is organized, okay? At the system level, entity level, material level, all right? So like this way, uh, it is easier for us to understand the universe. And also we just consider the uh, universe consists of uh, object flow and the uh, knowledge flow. Therefore, uh, it is not complicated for us to understand the universe, okay? Now we enter uh, into the detail or inside the system. For example, a system consists of entity, then what should be the entity inside uh, the system, all right? So uh, physical entity. So entity here basically refer uh, to all the rigid body or deformable body or all the matter uh, which exists in the universe, all right? And uh, uh, all the physical entity will form a physical world, all right? And uh, also in particular, the physical entity on Earth are visible to human's eye, all right? So these are the, the basic panel uh, uh, about the uh, physical entity on Earth, all right? And uh, here I'm going to show you some uh, picture, okay? In order to understand about the uh, visibility of a physical entity on Earth. For example, we are able to see the plant, we are able to see the river, we are able to see building, we are able to see bridges, we are able to see road, we are able to see car and the street, we are able to see ships and the boats, and the, we are able to see airplane, we are able to see tank, etc. So the, the physical world on Earth uh, is uh, visible to human eye on the normal condition, uh, right? And uh, in terms of uh, material, because uh, inside the entity, uh, we have a uh, material. And uh, this is also important uh, for you to know, uh, entity on earth consists of a material and the material could be uh, exist in uh, one of these uh, four states, all right? And uh, we have a solid state, liquid state, gas state, and the state of uh, plasma, all right? So this is uh, very important. Then for the design of the sensor, so basically we may want to uh, design the sensor which allow uh, the user uh, to measure signal, okay? Uh, from a material in solid state to measure signal from material in liquid state to measure material, uh, the signal from material in gas state or eventually to design the sensor uh, to measure signal uh, from material in plasma state, All right? So maybe this just uh, uh, help you uh, to understand that the, the, the requirement for the design of a sensor. 
and uh, we will study the sensor which allow us to measure uh, physical quantity which are related to material in liquid state, for example, or in the gas state, for example, all right, okay. And uh, the state of uh, material could uh, undergo transition. Uh, and uh, then you will see energy is uh, behind the uh, transition because uh, once we add in energy, then solid become liquid, liquid become a gas, gas become a plasma. So we just bump in energy. Or uh, reversely, if we take out the energy, then plasma become a gas, gas become a liquid, liquid become a solid, All right? So then you see, actually is energy which animate the dynamics of the whole universe, right? So this is the example showing you the, the power of energy which animate the, 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 the dynamics of a material, dynamics of entity, dynamics of a system, all right? Okay. And this is one more example for you to know the transition of the state from solid to gas, gas back to solid, all right? Okay, so it's quite straightforward. Now we look at the property of a uh, physical entity because uh, uh, we have universe is organized uh, into system. System uh, consists of an entity, okay? Then for individual entity, what should be the property? What should be the constraint? Because how come they can interact uh, together and uh, produce a dynamic behavior, right? So then we need to look at the, these two very important aspects of entity. One is about the property, Another is about the constraint, all right? So we start with the property. For example, in the physical world, there's only single entity. Then in this case, uh, we only have a property. There's no constraint. Constraint means that this you, you have a two entity. La. Then these two entity will subject to the constraint. So if we only have a single entity, then we can only talk about the property because there's no interaction. So therefore, this slide helps you to understand Property come first before constraint, you know. It's not constraint come first before property, right? Because once you have a single entity, you can only talk about property. There's no constraint at all, right? Okay. Then once we have a two property or two entity inside the physical world, then we can talk about the property plus constraint. And the constraint uh, is due to the presence of uh, uh, property. For example, the red uh, sphere has a mass, the blue sphere has a mass. The presence of a mass or due to the property of a mass, then there is a gravitational uh, force, okay? Acting on this pair of uh, mass, okay? So, and uh, due to the constraint of uh, gravitational force, then eventually, uh, there is a relative motion uh, between these two entities and the land there's an interaction between these two entities and the interaction will create relationship because they form a pair. The pair means it's, it's, there's a relationship, genre, right? And the relationship include uh, membership, family, category, etc. All right. So uh, as long as uh, uh, there is more than one entity inside the physical world, then uh, not only we have a property, uh, we also have a, okay, a constraint, okay, all right. Then what happens if there are more than two NDD uh, in the physical world, then, okay, there should be the existence of uh, NDD plus interaction among the, the NDD, all right, and the interaction will create relationship, etc. So it makes sense, all right. So now we can define, okay, uh, what is the property, all right? So the physical quantity which related to self-existence of a physical entity are called the property, right? So this is the definition of a property, right? Then for example, for a human being, we have a property which include a mass, weight, gender, volume, et cetera, right? Uh, for a car, we can name uh, these uh, list of uh, properties such as uh, mass, lens, width, color, etc. All right. Okay. So that's about the understanding of uh, uh, property of the physical entity. And then uh, what are constraints, okay, which are related to physical entity. All right. And uh, if there's only 
uh, single existence uh, in the physical world, then there's no constraint, all right? And uh, then, uh, then in this case, we only talk about the property of this uh, entity, uh, okay? And uh, the property of this entity may include uh, physical property, chemical property, biological property, social property, etc. All right? And uh, if there's a reference, okay, for which to, pro okay, if there's a something uh, uh, provides a reference uh, uh, to the existence of an entity, okay, for let's say such as a space reference and uh, time reference, uh, then they are two generic constraints such as a, a space constraint and the time constraint, right? So this is under the condition uh, they are the default uh, reference for space, the default reference for time. Then we can talk about the uh, space constraint and the time constraint, all right? So these two types of constraint are not related to the entity uh, itself, all right? So whether this entity exists or not, if we say the space reference is always there, time reference is always there, all right? So, so these are the two special uh, constraints which are applicable to all the entity in the physical world, all right? Then if there are more than one entity in the physical world, then we can talk about the constraint among the physical entity themselves, all right? So then the property uh, uh, which uh, condition uh, the action, reaction, configuration, topology, uh, among the N NDD, then all these uh, uh, property basically are called as a constraint, all right? Then on top of uh, these uh, constraint uh, due to the property of a physical entity themselves, uh, and uh, there are two uh, default or generic constraint. One refer to space constraint, another refers to time constraint, all right? So let me give you a big picture about the uh, the, the detail of a constraint, all right? So now we can uh, define, uh, okay, uh, what is constraint, all right? So the physical quantity which are related to the core existence of a multiple physical entity are called a constraint, okay? But here uh, we include uh, the four constraints such as a space constraint and the time constraint, all right? So, and uh, for example, a human being, uh, may include, okay, constraint of a weight, constraint of position, uh, constraint of age, constraint of a degree. A car may include uh, the constraint of a weight, constraint of velocity, constraint of ownership, constraint of the price, etc. right? Because the price will impose a constraint on the decision of uh, buying or not buying. Uh, okay, the, the ownership also impose a constraint of uh, whether to own it or not to own it, right? Okay, so these are the uh, constraints, okay? So, so you will see uh, constraint is uh, kinds of uh, uh, property, but uh, this property we may impose uh, constraint or may condition uh, action and the reaction among the entity, all right? For example, degree may impose a constraint on the decision about the hiring or not to hire. Uh, this person. Age also may impose a constraint on the decision about the hiring or not to hire, all right? Normally a company will not hire a person uh, at the age of a uh, hundred year old, China. <laughs> all right, okay? So, so, so the property, some of the property basically will induce a constraint or become a constraint, all right, okay? So then what is a spatial constraint? And here just show you, uh, simple example, okay? So the, the space may impose a constraint about the movement or displacement of an entity in the space, right? And here is also an example showing you the constraint for this activity. And the spatial constraint is for all the robot to remain inside this rectangular field, okay? The robot cannot go beyond the rectangular field, right? And then, here is a, another uh, technique term, uh, which is called behavior. Then what is the behavior? So basically behavior 
refer to the uh, evolution in time uh, of a property and the constraint. Uh, okay, so then we can define proper, uh, behavior as the evolution of property and the constraint in time. Uh, okay, all right. So when this evolve in time, then okay, we call it as a, as a behavior. All right. And uh, then if we have an n entity, okay, which exists in the space, uh, therefore, then we can talk about the configuration topology among uh, this n entity. Uh, when this configuration topology evolve in time, then you will see due to the presence of a constraint, uh, some uh, entity may enter into action reaction. So this action reaction are called as an interaction. When interaction evolve in time, then we have an event. When event evolve in time, we have an episode. When episode evolve in time, then we have a story. So therefore, uh, from this slide, you understand uh, the universe is uh, full of a story because uh, uh, story emerge uh, at every <laughs> time instance, right? Because the universe is a dynamic uh, system, okay? At the higher level, it, it is a huge system and uh, this system has a dynamics, all right? And the, inside the dynamics, we can talk about the story, episode, even interaction, and the individual behavior of an uh, entity, all right? Okay, and all these things evolve in time. So time, space are default constraints, which are applicable to all the entity, all right? So time, space are not related to individual entity, channel. These, these two constraints, are independent from uh, any individual entity, right? Okay. So then this slide basically show you like, okay, if uh, you let the robot to play the football game, then you see the dynamics like, among the, the team of uh, robot, right? Then here, okay, under the context of uh, this course, we want to know, okay, uh, how to measure the value of a property, how to measure the value of a constraint. Uh, property constraint measurable or not. So these are our concerns you know, because for this course, uh, the objective is to uh, study the principle behind the design of a measurement and the sensing system, right? So then we want to know what to measure, right? The answer now should be the value of a property, the value of a constraint, right? So then in this case, we must, uh, okay, use this term, uh, physical quantity. Physical quantity basically refer to the value of property, value of constraint, uh, okay? So we are living, uh, so this slide basically remind you, okay? Uh, also the universe is a huge universe, may consist of a many, many physical world. For example, every planet may form a physical world. Then on Earth, we have our own physical world. Then for us, we are living inside the physical world on Earth. So all our study by default, uh, we focus on the system on us, okay? So by default, <laughs> we, uh, it's not our interest, uh, okay? Or it should not be our main activity to design measurement and the sensing system for the physical world, or moon, physical world, or mass, or et cetera, all right? So we are living on us. So this just bring your attention on us, all right? Then, uh, this also is a background knowledge for you to know. All existence on Earth are also manifestation of energy. So it's the same. So you will see in the galaxy, we have a black hole. Black hole basically is a concentration of energy. So it's an entity which absorb energy uh, so strongly that the, even the light cannot exit. When the light cannot exit, then you cannot measure the temperature. Like there's no transfer of a thermal energy. This is why uh, more or less uh, inside the black hole, the temperature is zero, absolute zero, because all the energy is absorbed, ne never you need out. If you put the sensor there, you get the nothing, all right? So then you will see the banding energy is a huge, but the temperature is very low because uh, there's no radiation. Everything is uh, captured by the black hole. Then we are more or less here at this level, okay? Star, uh, planet, okay? Something like that, all right? So, and uh, on Earth, uh, you see a um, lot of a uh, manifestation of energy, okay? For example, when you burn the uh, material, then the fire uh, come out. So the fire basically is a process of uh, transforming material into energy, Jana. 
when you burn something, then the mass of the something <laughs> diminish, then the, the heat we are, we are sent uh, in our radiate out, la, right? So this is a typical example of uh, when you burn something into flame, all right? Then this material uh, stream uh, into uh, the ashes, la, okay? Uh, very tiny portion of, uh, okay, the ashes, all right, okay? Then for when you push a car, basically is um, uh, you see manifestation of uh, kinetic energy, when you change the height of the object on Earth, then this is manifestation of uh, uh, potential energy. And then when you uh, transfer your energy, let's apply a force to uh, pull an object, make the object undergo a displacement, then there's a transfer uh, of uh, energy uh, from the work done by your force, by your applied force. So, all right. So then uh, what? should be the quantity. So physical quantity basically uh, refer to the quantifiable property, okay, which are processed by physical entity or physical system. And uh, inside the property, which also include uh, the type of a property which uh, we are demonstrate uh, as a constraint, such as a mass. Mass will produce a gravitational uh, force. And the gravitational force uh, is kind of a constraint that we add on other eligible thing, all right? So quantifiable means uh, basically it's a value, like, okay? So the, the quantity or property has a value, all right? So this is definition of a physical quantity. So physical quantity basically refer to the value of a property, value of a constraint, like, okay, in layman term, all right? So here you will see uh, we have a visible uh, quantities such as a length, high volume, dimension, shape, color. We also have an invisible quantity such as energy, mass, weight, force, friction, etc. Right. So if we show you this slide, and immediately you understand uh, color, length, speed uh, are visible uh, quantity, uh, and the temperature should not be visible to you. Uh, weight is not visible to you. So you must have a sensor. <laughs> in order to measure weight, friction is not visible to you, pressure is not the uh, quantity visible to you, all right? So, and uh, then, uh, just now I already mentioned, uh, okay, two major mental activity of a human being on earth is to uh, have uh, this uh, inner uh, motivation uh, uh, to change the world, to understand the world, okay? So these are the inner motivation, it's natural from, <laughs> The, 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 the mode from the mind of a human being because uh, uh, the mind of a human being has uh, this uh, uh, tendency uh, to understand the world and also to improve the world, right? Then through the discovery of a knowledge about the world, then we can understand the world. Then through the invention of a new object, better object invention of an intelligent system, intelligent machine, intelligent product, then we try to uh, improve the world, okay? So in neutral term, uh, is to change the world, right? So for both mental activity, then you will see the presence of a sensor will help us uh, to understand the world and uh, help us to change the world, right? So it's very important, all right? So then in human society, the, the discovery of uh, knowledge or understanding the, of the world are being undertaken in parallel uh, by many uh, scientific disciplines. Uh, so they recoup them into different uh, science branches, uh, science or engineering branches. Then uh, we have uh, a hierarchy of uh, science and hierarchy of uh, engineering discipline, uh, et cetera. Okay. Then you look at the scale of the universe for us to do the investigation and understanding. Then you will see, we try to understand uh, the entire spectrum uh, of uh, the dimension of the universe. Uh, however, for this course, we just focus on the design of uh, measurement and the sensing system, which will help us uh, to improve uh, uh, human society. La. So we are not going to uh, design the sensor la, to measure the solar system, measure the galaxy, or measure the, the signal behavior of the particle, etc. Okay, so these are under the study of, uh, of science. La. Okay, so there are other courses we, which we are uh, uh, dedicated to the design of a special sensor which will enable us to understand Okay, the universe at the very, very small scale 
and uh, at the very, very large scale, okay? For us, our intention is to understand the world at the normal scale, all right? So then how to understand the world? The best way is to uh, consider uh, the system, uh, uh, the, the physical world on Earth as a system. So therefore, uh, we have an input, we have an output inside the system. There are many, many measurable quantity, okay, physical quantity. So therefore, we, we, we just focus our design on the uh, measurement and the sensing, uh, sensing system, which allow us to measure all these uh, physical quantity at the normal scale, not the tiny scale or not at the huge scale, right? And uh, here is just a typical uh, example of a robotic system. We are able, we should be able to measure like its behavior, and uh, there must be a sensor like, inside the robot which will measure the, the motion related uh, physical quantity, right? And also the pressure between the foot and the ground, right? And this robot has a vision system. So the robot should be able to measure uh, physical quantity, which are the radio to visual signal. And uh, this robot can hear. So there must be a sensor which allows the robot to measure the uh, acoustic signal, right? Then for this type of behavior, obviously you will see there must be a sensor allow the robot to measure position orientation, right? And uh, to measure the force top impaction force, okay? All right, so then uh, is it easier to undertake uh, sensing and the measurement of a physical quantity? Uh, so it depends, uh, okay, for some physical quantity, it should be easier for others, it may not be uh, uh, so easier, all right? So then we must uh, consider uh, the answer to these uh, four questions, okay? Question number one, how to sense a physical quantity? Question number two, how to measure the sense the value of the physical quantity, okay? So these uh, two questions should be the focus of uh, study in this course. Then subsequently we can continue because we want to understand the world, okay? Then we may want to know the answer to question number three, how to find out the relationship among the physical quantity, how to make use of a discover the relationship, okay? So the answer to these two questions will not be covered by this course because uh, there are other courses which will cover the answer to these two questions, okay? Because uh, there is enough content for us to study within this course, okay? Which we are focused on the answer to the first two questions, right? To be clear, okay? So there are other subjects which we are, uh, uh, try to, okay, provide the answer uh, to question number three, question number four, all right, okay. So then uh, for the focus of this course, then we want to know, okay, how to sense the value of a physical quantity, then how to measure the sense the value, okay, come from the physical quantity. So you see, there are two stages, sensing and the measurement. So this is why then you see the title of this course. We have a three keyword system. System will help you to understand what should be the input, what should be the output. Then we have a two inner process, okay? Start with the sensing followed by measurement, okay? Then what are the relationship between these two? 
So actually, if you understand the three keywords in the title of this course, then more or less you understand the content of uh, this course already, all right? So, and uh, the whole purpose, the output from the, this course of our measurement in the sensing system should be the measuring the value of the physical quantity. Then how to do the measurement. So in practice, there are two ways to do the measurement. One is by comparison, another is by sensing, okay? And here our focus is the second one because the measurement by comparison is a manually undertake the measurement. And what we want to achieve is to do automatic measurement by machine themselves, all right? So measurement by comparison, then we need to have a reference uh, value uh, for the physical quantity, such as a reference for time, reference for space, reference for weight, refer reference for length, etc. All right, then we do the comparison. For reference of time, so we have an international reference, uh, okay? So time is a, is a single uh, variable. So we have a single axis uh, to represent uh, the reference for time, uh, all right? And uh, for our daily life, uh, so you understand, uh, we have an international standard for the reference of, reference of our time, which make use of uh, uh, 24 division. So it means we have a absolute reference uh, with absolute uh, zero uh, time. And uh, on top of that, we have a relative reference, uh, 24 relative uh, reference, uh, for example, Singapore time zone, okay? So we call them as a time zone. Time zone basically is a relative uh, uh, reference, okay? Then with the time zone, then we can use our clock uh, to serve as a reference. So everyone uh, follows the clock, then we know what is the current time, okay? By doing a comparison. So actually every day, every hour, more or less we are doing measurement of time. Because when you, walk, when you look at your watch, or look at the, your smart handphone. Uh, if you want to read the time, basically you are doing a measurement of a time. Okay, so this is a daily activity uh, that you will that you you will undertake uh, frequently, uh, right? Then inside the computer, we also need to provide a reference of time. So so you will see in the design of uh, every digital computer, there's a clock module. So clock module basically provides a reference for time. Uh, then in this way all the operation inside the digital computer are being synchronized, all right? Then the unit of the time, so unit of the time, uh, so there's an international agreement. So then, okay, you will see, okay, one second is equal to the duration in which this amount of a cycle of a such radiation has occurred. So we use a, a, a cesium atom, okay, to emit, the, the radiation, so you will make a transition uh, between two uh, set of a scale. So then we count this number of uh, radiation or transition. So then this correspond to one second. So you see, we have a, a reference for us to know what is one second, all right? Okay. And uh, in layman time, uh, we have uh, this uh, unit of a measurement uh, for us to use, uh, such as second, mini, hour, day, week, month, year, decade, century, etc. But you must pay attention now, okay? In engineering, there's only one basic unit of a time. Basic unit of a measurement of time means a default unit of a measurement for time, all right? Then for the mass, it's the same. Now. We have a, a, a reference. Now. This is 1 kg, this is 0 0.5 kg, 0 0.2 kg, 0 0.1 kg, 0 0.05 kg, etc. Then we do the comparison, now. then we know, okay? The, what should be the way of uh, any object. So you see, we have uh, this uh, mass which serve as a reference for, for the way, all right? So then what should be the uh, unit of the mass or internationally agreed, okay? It's a reference for kilogram, okay? So then we have uh, this uh, object, okay? So it's the platinum uh, iridium alloy, okay? Which is, uh, uh, kept okay in the international bureau okay in Paris etc. So we have a standard okay uh, entity which serve as a reference for one kg one kilogram okay. Then in layman term we can talk about the uh, microgram milligram gram kilogram ton etc. Okay.
So then the basic unit of measurement should be kilogram, okay? So then this is a default uh, reference, okay? Default unit of measurement for, for the weight. Then for space is the same, okay? We must have a reference for space. Then uh, for the physical space on Earth, it is a three-dimensional space. Then we must have at least a three reference for, for the space, all right? So then, for example, if we want just to measure the lens, we use a ruler like, to serve as a reference. And then we do the comparison. Like, so this is a typical example for us to do manual measurement of the, of the lens. And uh, then we must uh, have uh, uh, one reference for one dimensional space, two reference for two dimensional space. Okay, so it's easier for you to understand. Then three reference for three dimensional space. Like, all right, so then the unit of a measurement of a lens. So the basic unit of measurement is one meter. So one meter, uh, it corresponds uh, to the distance traveled by, by the light in the vacuum within this amount of time. This is just a very tiny fraction of a time, uh, right? So this is the internationally accepted okay, uh, reference uh, for, for, the, for the lens of a one meter, right? So in layman term, we have a nanometer, micrometer, millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer. But pay attention that the default unit of measurement for lens is a meter, right? Then for the speed, if we combine the basic unit of measurement of time and the basic unit measurement of lens together, then we have this new unit of measurement of speed, such as a meter per second, kilometer per hour. Then meter per second should be the default unit of measurement for velocity for speed, right? So these are the basic knowledge for you to know. Then this is just a simple exercise for you to, to play like, with the unit of measurement, okay? So what is the travel distance by shift within two minutes if it moves at a constant speed of uh, two kilometer per hour, okay? Then we need to do the conversion. Like, this just help you to understand that we must make use of a default uh, unit of a measurement. Like, so the time, then the, the speed, then travel distance, uh, time together, and then you have the value in meter, all right? Then for us, we our focus is not to do manual measurement at the sensing. We want to develop an automatic device, okay, to do the uh, measurement and the sensing. Then you may want to know, uh, why do we need to do automatic sensing and the measurement? The answer is, uh, we want to change the world. We want to invent intelligent machine, intelligent product, intelligent system, et cetera. For example, smart car. Then we need to have a lot of a sensor, automatic sensor, like not a human being uh, to do the measurement. We want to develop a smart robot in which we want to have an automatic sensor, all right? Not the manually operated the sensor, all right? Then what is the principle for us to follow in order to design automatic uh, sensor? Basically, there are two steps, okay? One is to do the sensing, to convert the value of uh, physical quantity into a computer readable value, all right? Second step is to calibrate the, the sensor so that the output value is exactly equal to the input value of the physical quantity. So you see, these are the two steps. So conceptually, they are very simple. First, convert value of a physical quantity into computer readable value. Second step is to make a computer readable value to be exactly equal to the value of uh, quantity on the measurement, all right? So then what is the purpose of sensing? Just now I already explained, okay? Sensing is to use a sensing element to convert the value of a physical quantity into computer readable value. Then measurement is to calibrate the system so that the output value exactly equal to the input value. So uh, the generic principle is very simple. Then the key issue is to find out the, uh, what should be the sensing element which allow us to convert the value of a quantity into computer readable value. That should be the challenge, okay? But in terms of uh, design principle, design procedure is uh, extremely simple, okay? And the calibration is also a simple mathematical procedure, so it's not an issue. The key issue challenge remain in the finding of uh, relevant sensing element which allow us to convert value of a quantity into computer readable value, all right? So uh, this is a uh, uh, highlight to you, like the, the challenge. So actually challenge is uh, uh, to find out the, the appropriate uh, sensor element which allow us to convert uh, 
the value of a quantity into computer readable uh, value. So you have a two situation. One is uh, we are able to directly do the conversion. Another one is uh, indirectly to do the conversion. Therefore, then we have uh, these two schemes uh, which will guide the design, okay? For those uh, values uh, which are directly detectable, then you we only have a front end sensing element, good enough already. In case if we have a, a non-directly detectable value uh, from the physical quantity, then we must have a two-stage uh, sensing uh, approach, okay? First, convert the value into detectable value, then from a detectable value into computer readable value, all right? So then, what is the purpose of doing calibration? Because the output by default, uh, normally the value from a sensing element should not be exactly equal to the value of a quantity on the measurement. So therefore we can rectify these uh, discrepancies by A in the equation. The equation will do the rectification, okay? Uh, later on during, during the study of uh, individual sensor, then we may uh, show you uh, some example of doing calibration, then you will understand it's a very, very simple procedure, all right? So the purpose is to make uh, output from the sensor is exactly equal to the value of a physical quantity. So conceptually, it's quite straightforward, all right? So then in this way, after calibration, then immediately you can use it to undertake the measurement, all right? So that's all for the study of uh, this lecture. So the key takeaway from this lecture is for you to understand the nature of the universe and the nature of the physical system on Earth, and also the nature of the entity and the nature of the system, right? Then from the entity, then we understand we should be able to measure the value of a property, the value of a constraint, right? Then there are two ways for us to do the measurement. One is a manually uh, undertake uh, measurement. Another way is to automatically undertake uh, measurement. And our focus is to achieve uh, automatic uh, measurement and the sensing, all right? Thank you for your attention. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, in the study of the next lecture.